Welcome back. We're going to be focusing right now on the different options we have with groups, um, modes, in fact. And we're going to be speaking about children. Yeah, not those kind of children. Um, take a look at this. A lot of you are wondering in early in the episodes, why would I want to play two tracks on top of each other? Uh, if you're not a musician and you don't have a, an individual track for every single item or, or instrument and you're going to play this all at the same time at different levels, why would you want to have multiple tracks playing who only plays a um, song? Uh, trust me, if you have that ability, you're going to start using it. And I'll show you an example of that right now. Um, we have here uh, a sound effect, an atmospheric sound effect, which is uh, it says Beach with Children. So if we hit play on that... A little bit of atmosphere, outdoors, children playing in the background, obviously some ocean. Um, now, what if you're doing a play, um, and in this story, that's your sound effect in the background, but when the actor opens a soda can, you want that sound to come from the speakers. Uh, you could then highlight, move that track there, highlight the can open, and while this track is playing, at any moment in time, you can then hit the go button and fire that sound effect. And you could fire it again. So that's one reason you would want to have two different tracks playing on top, but there is a million more. Um, let's say you want a very nice intro to a song. Um, so you want to be at the beach. <laughs> again, we're back with the sound effect. You hit go. Let it play a couple seconds and then you hit go again and the song starts. Now, in an episode from now, I'll be teaching you how to fade in and out, controlling the volume levels, uh, but we're gonna focus right now continually on the different types of groups. So the way I just showed you right now, we're firing every single one of those individually and manually. Uh, but if you're going to do the same timing every performance, then you don't need to have somebody firing all those cues. So I can show you right now how that works. So we're going to make a group right here by dragging the group option into there, which is empty. Now we're going to drag Beach with Children into the group. And we're going to drag this Gypsy Thread track in there. And we're going to name the group um, Pretty Song. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's late. Um, okay, so now that we're not on an individual track, we don't want to find the uh, in, uh, information of the track. We want to find the uh, information of the group. So we're going to highlight the group, which brings up, usually it'll be in the basic category down here. Uh, you can trigger to triggers or you can go to mode. In this case, we're going to go to mode. Um, you have four different options. You have timeline which starts all children simultaneously. Now, child or children is your individual tracks. I believe they don't call it tracks because it could be anything. It could be a mic cue, a video cue, a camera cue, a network cue, a fade cue, a MIDI cue. So they gave it the name children. There may be more to this I don't know about. That's just how I assume it's, it's being um, assembled here. So um, if we go to start all children simultaneously, when we start the group, they'll all play at the exact, exact, same exact time, very similar to how we did the auto follows uh, prior. But in this case, it comes from the group, not the individual tracks, okay? Both play automatically with the sound effect on top. Um, now, the difference is, this is where pre-weights become really handy. If you watched my last episode, we spoke about pre-weights. This is where pre-weights come in perfectly. Um, so let's go and put a pre-weight here of six seconds. Now that song, that sound effect will start. It'll wait six seconds and the gypsy thread routine will come in automatically. Here we go and go. You see it counting up. Three, four, five. Now, let's say you want to stop the sound effect uh, at 10 seconds into that track. So you could then bring a stop cue 
right in there. You could, it's, it has an X on it because something is wrong. And if you notice, the group also has an X in case the drawer is closed. It, you can determine that something is wrong inside. Um, so you open up the drawer and you can see right here that something is not wrong. This queue has nothing attached to it. It has no target queue. So we need to put a target to it. So in that case, we're going to stop the beach with children sound effect by grabbing it and laying it right on top of the stop queue. Okay, perfect. Now we're going to tell it to stop that queue. Let's say 11 seconds. Okay, now check this out and watch as it counts down to the 11 seconds and go. Song will start now. And then it stopped that sound effect. Didn't stop it very smoothly or nicely, but uh, it did stop it. Um, I will get into the fades in another video, but that is the differences on how you start automatically. Now, here's something that's fairly new to QLab users. This wasn't around in the previous uh, um, editions um, or versions. Uh, but let's go back to the Pretty Song group, and uh, this time we're going to delete and bring all these to zero, okay? This is really, really cool. Now you have timelines, so if you're working on Final Cut or anything like that, this is where this comes in really, really handy. Um, so now if we drag this up, you have this timeline, and you can see your individual um, tracks. Uh, now check this out. You can then grab the stop um, cue, which is right there, okay? And you can move it around wherever you want. So let's say you want to stop that sound effect right there. Now that's at 36 seconds, but you're visually using this to see it. Um, so at 36 seconds, this is going to stop. If we bring it back to there, which is 8 seconds, it's going to stop. Now we didn't have to pr uh, do it manually here. We can just slide these pieces around. We can move gypsy thread up to there and then bring the stop over to here by physically dragging them around. And this, this is really handy if you have lighting cues and stuff later because you can move the lighting cues to the beat of the music and stuff. It's, it's incredible. Um, Let's try this whole group and see what it does now. You can see it's getting ready to fire that gypsy thread. And then we have 17, 16, 15 seconds left before it stops it automatically. And so then you did it without having to do all the math and doing the seconds and all that. You just literally um, drag those pieces around wherever you want. And later you'll have 30, 40 <laughs> things in line and you can do a lot with them. So that is the timeline and how you can use it. Um, I have been using everything by the clock for so long that I still use the clock for a lot. Um, but the timeline is pretty, pretty cool. Um, the other options we have is uh, randomization. So people would say, why would you want to randomize something? Well, one, let's say you have, um, in my case, I had 22 uh, theaters that I performed with my wife uh, from January um, till March. Uh, in amongst those theaters, I had cruise ships that I was performing at. And I'm hearing the same pre-show music over and over and over in the same order. My brain knows what song is next when that one finishes. Uh, it can be a little bit annoying. So, um, you can change that by putting your pre-show songs, like we had earlier, but you can, you can have them randomized. So click the group, uh, and then you're going to go to start first child and on the very bottom it says start random child and go to next queue so if that's the case uh, our previous um, pre-show video that I showed you guys had a whole bunch of auto follows so we're gonna mimic that right now with these door sounds okay and uh, you can see that when I start it it's not gonna start from number one And if I start it again, it's 
it's going to always randomize to a different one. Now, here's another option that you'd want to do that for. If you take these off, uh, let's say you're doing a play, and uh, there's a whole bunch of times that someone's walking out of a door, or walking through a door, and you want the door sound to close. But you don't want the door to be the same exact sound every single time. The audience is going to get very uh, aware that that is a sound effect. Um, but in fact, you can keep firing that cue by having it randomly select one of those door sounds, which are all slightly different. If we put it on the random setting, which is the start random child and go to next cue, we can fire the random door, fire it again, fire it again, fire it again. Every time you do it, it's going to be a random sound. Um, that becomes very handy with those sorts of things. Applause cues, laugh cues, all those things can be really handy um, by randomizing it. Randomizing it. <laughs> it's really late. Uh, and, uh, and trying to give you that, that totally unique uh, sound on stage. Um, so that's randomizing. You, of course, you have timeline. You have uh, start first child, enter into group. So that is very um, standard in the groups as far as what we would do for like your pre-show music where you start the group, you go into the group, you start the very first child and you go to the next one, next one, next one on auto follow cues manually inside there. If you do not put an auto follow cue, it will not follow, which you noticed in my previous video. Um, start first child and go to next cue. I very rarely use this one. Um, I pretty much stick with the timeline. I use that the most, uh, or I use the uh, start first child enter into the group. I use the bottom two the least out of all of my programming uh, for the type of show that I have. Uh, but that's the different options, the four different options in group queues.